rebuild. Tell your neighbor, rebuild. rebuild. And we are looking at the book of Nehemiah. We're looking at Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Rebuild. Prayer provision proceed. Make sure you have the scripture text. We're going to read it in a moment. But let me take you all back to Sunday school. When we all were growing up in church, there was a song that they sang about building. And I'm talking about Father Abraham and many sons. There's a song that says, Building of the Temple. Building of the Temple. Y'all know, y'all can see what me, you know. Building, building up, up the, the temple. The Lord. Boys, will you help us? Girls, will you help us? Building up the temple of the Lord. From when you were growing up in church, you were being taught how to be builders for the house of God. We have to understand that when it comes to building up the temple of the Lord is, we're not doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it to be seen or to make a name for ourselves, but we're doing it for the glory of God. Because God has a plan for our lives and on this earth. And what we're doing is continuing the chain effect that Christ has done when he was on this earth, even on to today. You are a part of something that is so big. I once went on the internet and I googled how many people lived. You know what Google told me? They said there's an estimate that there was over 100 billion people on this earth. And we are at about 8 billion now. So you're a part of something that is so big, a story that has been told for generations, for thousands of years. And God has chosen you to be a part of such a great story. Now when it comes to building up the temple of the Lord, we have to understand that when we do this, we are giving ourselves everything that we are and everything that we will be. And building up the temple, you may not receive monetary gain. You may not be noticed. You may feel like, I'm doing all of this but no one is noticing me. But you have to remember that this is for the glory of God. Some would even compare it to charity work. You know what the Red Cross is having some type of charity thing to raise money. So you come up there and you wash cars and you cut grass and you sell food. But when the day is over, you get no payment. When the day is over, you go home tired from that work for what you were doing for the greater good. Is because you believed in that movement. You were doing something not for yourself, but for the benefit of others. And it was a greater purpose and a greater plan. You understand me? So when it comes to building up the temple of the Lord, we have to be willing to not get paid. We have to be willing to not be seen. We have to be willing to build even when it looks like nothing is happening. We have to understand that not everyone is a builder, you know. Amen. When we look at Central Church, Central Church is in the process of building. We already began working. Our feet are already on the ground. The groundwork is taking place already. But some people will come to our church and go to another church and say, I don't want to be in a church where I have to work. I want to be in a church that's already established. When we went to that funeral yesterday, that church was... Beautiful inside there. Yeah. I mean, choir, media team, everything was on point. And people would say, that's the type of church I want to be a part of, and more power to you. But it takes a special type of person to actually build. Yeah, because building takes time, it takes effort, it takes patience. Not everybody is willing to build a church. And God is saying, if you are here today, you are one of the chosen few who has the strength to build. You have the strength to build up the temple of the Lord. Now, you have to understand, when you build up 
Will you pray for God? God doesn't leave your life in shambles. God will build you up as well. See, years ago, I was trying to get into to UB. Now, when I was trying to get into UB, it wasn't UB, it was COB. So I was trying to get into the College of the Bahamas. And to apply for the College of the Bahamas, you would have a $50 processing fee with your resume and everything in it. So I did everything that I needed to do, brought the $50, and I put it in, and I said, well, Lord, I hope I get it. Pray. Then they called me and said, come on and pick up the letter. So you don't know what you're going to experience. I wish they told me over the phone. It was going to happen. But they said, come on, pick up the letter. So you went there probably filled with expectations. Saw so two piles of letters, left and right. Okay. You don't know where that man is going to pull from. He put, he put your name, he called your name, the minute you open it, we regret to inform you that you didn't meet the requirements to attend the College of Obama's. And that $50 is gone. Yes, it's non-refundable. It's out of here. And you know what happened? I tried again and again. The second time I tried, it said, we regret to inform you. Then I tried a third time, and y'all wouldn't believe what it said. We regret to inform you. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, what am I going to do? And I said to myself, I said, you know what? Okay. Since I'm here at church, I'm going to just give my entire self to God. I'm going to do whatever God wants me to do. I'm going to do my full service here at Central Church. So I went into the media department and I started taking photos, I started doing videos, I started doing flyers. I'm talking about I was going all out. I had a computer that was struggling to keep up with me. I'm talking about a video that's 30 seconds long, takes about 13 hours to load on my computer. And when it finally loaded after those 13 hours, I realized that I spelled the word wrong. So I had to go back in again for another 13 hours just to correct one word. And I'm talking about week after week and month after month, I gave myself to God because I was focusing on building up the temple. Now people would say, how can you build up the temple in a church like this? See, I was a part of the media department and I knew that as we put things out, eyes will see. And the word of God will be able to travel further. There will be people who watch our church who will never step foot in it. But at the end of the day, I wanted God's will to be done. And I focused on what God wanted me to do. See, I played my role. And I said, God used me because he wants people who are available to him. So, we would be at banquets. Remember the church banquets we had? Everyone's dressed nice, sitting down, communion, eating and talking. I'm walking around taking photos and videos. No time to sit and eat. Event after event after event. I never received one dollar for the work I was putting in. Because I didn't want to get paid for the work I was doing for God. This was something that I loved to do. Like, like media is my thing. Apart from preaching, media is something that I love to do. And I gave my entire gift to God free of charge. For years, if you go on that Facebook page, you'll find thousands of photos and videos over the span of more than seven years of just hard work for the kingdom of God. And I want you to know that what you do for God doesn't go unnoticed. Because God saw my heart. And all I wanted to do was his will. And let me tell you, some people may have looked at me and said, that boy is a fool. He working dead hard for free. I wasn't working hard for free. I was doing the will of God. I was building up the temple because to be a builder was already inside of me. And I want you to know today, I am in, not COB. God didn't send me to a college. God sent me to a university. You understand? It don't say college in the Bahamas no more. It says the University 
of the Bahamas. God wanted to take me somewhere higher. See, I gave myself to him. And I said, let your will be done. I'll build up your temple and trust you with my life. And God has been building my life from that day on to now. And he still ain't building. He still ain't stopped building yet. I can still am putting the cements on the wall and laying the bricks because my story is not over yet. And God wants you to know that if you give yourself to him and you do what you are supposed to do in this church to the best of your ability and you give yourself to him, God will not leave you hanging. Amen. Don't look for something. Don't look for something where you got to pay me to do this. You got to pay me to do that or else I ain't doing it. God is looking for someone who is available. He is looking for someone who is saying, use me and let your will be done. We have to build the temple of the Lord, people. Let's get to the text. Everyone turn to Nehemiah chapter 2. Starting from verse 1. It says, in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King you all know that name, man. Yeah. When wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can't, this cannot be, this can be nothing but sadness of heart. In this story we were looking at, Nehemiah is literally the cupbearer of the king. When you're the cupbearer of the king, you have to understand that you're putting your life on the line every day. Before that king sips that water, you can drink it first. You, you must taste everything first, drink everything first, and if you don't die, then the king will have some of it. So, Nehemiah here is given his complete self, right? And he said to Nehemiah, he said, that this cannot be nothing but sadness of heart. Now Nehemiah was sad because something was wrong. There was something messing with him, a burning desire to fix something that is broken. Verse 3 said, I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins? And its gates have been destroyed by fire. How can we be happy when the place that I hold dear to my heart is in shambles? How can we be satisfied and central when we're not where we want to be yet? How can we be satisfied when we're not living in the fullness of God yet? God is saying that we need to have that same desire. We can't get settled. We can't say, well, we have a senior pastor now, that's all we needed. Well, we have people playing the instruments now, that's all we needed. God says we must continue to be on fire for him because there is more that is required of you. There is a higher level that God wants to take us to. Never be settled. Continue to push forward for greatness. Continuing on, the king, this verse 4, the king said to me, what is it you want. The king asked Nehemiah, what is it that you want? Now see, you have to be careful, you know, because in those days, if you go before the king without being summoned, you know they can kill you, right? You couldn't make one wrong step in the front of the king. So, he had to be careful. So he went to God instead of one him. At the end of the day, when God gives you an opportunity, we need to ask Him how to move. We need to ask Him what to do when we have this opportunity. When the answer is yes, God, how do I go about this thing? So we had to ask God. And the Bible says, Then I prayed to the God of heaven. Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king. If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let me send, let him send me to the city of Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. 
What this shows us is that all Christians need is a little time to pray. Before he answered the king, the first thing he did was consulted the king of all kings. He had to pray to God so that he can be shown favor. Before you move and you walk into those goals that you upset, you gotta pray that God's hand is on your life. You gotta pray that God blesses everything that you do. We gotta pray that God blesses the hands of the builders in this church and strengthen them for the work ahead. We have to pray that God gives us the provisions that we need because God has everything that we need. We must consult him before we move forward and do the work he has called us to do. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, uh, beside him, asked me, how long will your journey take? And when will you get back? It pleases, it pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also said to him, verse 7, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of trans Ephrates, so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. And may I have a letter to Ashford, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make the beams of the gate of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my request. When God's hand is on your life, no matter what you ask for, he will be able to provide. When God's hand is on your life, no one can stop you from where he is going to take you. Because the gracious hand of God was on my life, the king granted my request. So I went to the government. So I went. So I went to the governors of Charles and Phrygis and gave them the king's letter. The king had also sent up. Amen. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. This one cupbearer getting all of this. <laughs> this one cupbearer getting all of this. You would never think that a cupbearer would get all of that. Your, your, your job is to just taste the food and the drink. But when God's hand is on your life, God is able to give you more than you even need. He said the king sent army officers and cavalry with me. You sent a whole army with me to do this work. When God's hand is on your life, the provisions will be there. He will provide. He will open doors. He will do everything he needs to do in your life. You have nothing to worry about. Verse 10 says, When, when Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite officials heard about this. They were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there three days, I set, I set out during the night with a few others. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There was no mounts with me, except the one I was riding on. It says that I settled during the night with a few others. What is it saying that when it comes to the things that you're trying to do in life, everybody won't be included. And you shouldn't try to include the entire world in your business. It said that I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. Some visions and some words from God you have to keep to yourself. Amen. Some things God has called you to do, you can't tell everybody. Amen. Because we don't know the opposition that would have risen against Nehemiah if he was telling everyone along the way what he was going to do. But he used wisdom and he kept it to himself. And he said he set out during the night. When night comes, everybody wants to go to sleep. So they were able to travel comfortably. 
Verse 13 says, By night I went out through the valley gate toward the jackal. Oh, toward the jackal well and the dung gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Notice it says that he was examining the walls of Jerusalem, the same walls that have been broken down and destroyed by fire. Examining is to be honest about the situation. That's not being honest about the situation, so you are so you can rebuild because you can't rebuild if you don't know what is broken. We have to be honest with our lives. We have to be honest with our church. We have to examine central. We have to examine where do we lack? What is our weakness? Which area is broken and fix it? We can't just act as if everything is all right. We have to be willing to have uncomfortable conversations. We have to be willing to stand up tall for God and say, listen, this needs to be in order. I don't know how long it was in order, and if things are out of order long enough, it becomes the norm. But God is saying that things need to come in order. We have to examine and be honest with ourselves about what is going on. Amen. When it comes to the temple of the Lord, we must take this seriously. We must take this seriously because this is God's house we're building. And we're representing the kingdom of God. Verse 14 said, Then I moved on toward the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mount to get through. So I went up to the valley by night, examining the wall. Finally, I turned back, and we entered to the valley gate. The, the officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing, because as yet I had said, Nothing to the Jews, or to the priests, or nobles, or officials, or any other who would be doing the work. Amen. God gave him the vision, and God was going to show him when to reveal him. Verse 17 says, Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins. And its gates are being burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. Let us change the situation. God has given us the power to do it ourselves. We're not sitting in this church waiting for the workers to come. We are already here. God has already given you the power and the drive you need to get it done right now. We have to understand that we're not just children of God because we, like I said before, raising a child, you don't raise a baby to stay a baby. God has risen us up to be men and women of God. And what God is saying today is this, that we must get up and do the work ourselves. You are anointed for this work. God has already given you the strength. And God is saying it's time to get up and do it ourselves. We have the strength to finish the building in the back. When I came to this church and they were fixing the roof, I saw all of these people working, working hard. And in record time, they fixed the roof. We were able to get it done. You see these big panels up here? They wasn't there before, you know. After the hurricane and what happened, we could have seen straight through the roof. But one day, me and my cousin came here, and we saw Brother Watson in here by himself on a ladder with these giant ply boards pulling them up. Because God anointed him to do the work. And if he was here doing it alone, some people thought that was always that I was one man up there who fixed all of that. And if that's what one man can do, imagine what all of us can do together. Listen, everyone that is here, you are anointed to be here yes, to build up this temple of the Lord. Yes. At the end of the day, we can't worry about how it looks. We just need to do what God is telling us to do. Yes. First off, what you have to do is be sold out for Christ. 
You have to make a decision within yourself that no matter how long it takes, God, whatever you tell me to do, I am going to do it. Recently, I started working out again because I said I gotta lose all this weight. All right. You know? Gotta get in my suit. So I gotta put that in my suit one day, right? <laughs> so, I said to myself, I said, listen, I don't care if it takes 10 years, 20 years, 30 years for me to reach my goal. I will not quit. Amen. I will not give up. Because I saw a post from you seeing both. He said, he trained four whole years to run for nine seconds. And people quit in two months when they don't see results. I know one thing. Ever since I started, I saw my results. The clothes that were tight got slacker. I looked at myself, everything is more slower. And trust me, I ain't gonna stop. And if y'all don't start, I'm gonna pass y'all some people down. And I'm gonna leave y'all in the dust. Because I choose not to give up on building myself up. And God is saying, we can't give up on building central. The people are here to do the work. All of us are already here. You are anointed to do this work. God is saying that apply yourself because when I started, I guess, was taking photos. I had to go to work and work overtime to make money to buy more expensive cameras that were almost $1,000. And people were like, also, oh, you're going to start a photography business? Oh, no, I actually bought this for church. The church didn't buy it for me. I bought it myself. I took the hours to learn Photoshop myself. I took the time to learn After Effects myself. I took the time to get these things done because I know what was important. Like when I saw Jesse in the sound room, then Jesse on the piano, then Jesse on the drum, that day I saw Jesse on the roof. This is how we need to be in the house of God. We must always be evolving. He's the perfect example. I see Jesse doing everything. You would take the spot to him. Jesse doing everything. You understand? So what God is saying is that we have to work together. There's more you can do. Yes. You want gifts and talents in you that God is saying you need to use in this house. Because pastor needs help. Yes. We can't expect pastor and his family to do all the work. We can't expect them to be the only ones faster than praying. This man has a job. And he has a family. He's a father. He's a husband. He's a toastmaster. He's a senior pastor. He can put a fire ways every week. We got to take some of the burden too. We got to take some of the work too. We got to say, hey, I know how to cut grass. I'm going to cut the grass for this church. I know how to clean up. I'm going to clean up in this church. I know how to take photos. I'm going to take photos because there's going to come a day when I'm not going to be taking photos. There's going to be someone else walking around taking photos and doing videos and playing instruments. Because first I just was snapping the camera. Now I up here preaching. And I learned the instruments of one of these days I was sitting over there too. Because I'm trying to expand myself for the glory of God. Because I am all about building up the temple of the Lord. At the end of the day, I like what it says. It says, and we will no longer be in disgrace. We will be proud. We will be happy. We will be invited. We would be able to say, come, if you're not here every Sunday, every week, you're missing something great. We should be proud of what we're doing in this church. And trust me, I believe that God is going to bless each and every person that is here. If you give God yourself, he'll give you everything that you need. If you seek his kingdom first, everything in your life will fall into order. And understand what it says here. It says in verse 18, I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king had said to me. He gave them evidence and showed them everything that was going on because this would encourage them to build. When God gave pastor the vision and he comes up and tells us what it is, we should stand behind him and say, let's do the work. Because the Bible says, they reply, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. 
Centro, let us start rebuilding. We already started. God is saying, let's continue. God is saying, let's do more. God is saying, let's push a little bit harder. Let us continue to build up the temple of the Lord. I'm almost done. We're finishing our break now. Verse 19. But when, boy, the, the, the names in this story, when I was home, I was like, goodness. But when Sanballat, don't name your child, right? but when Sanballat, the Horonite, Tobiah, the Ammonite, officials and Jeshlem, the Arctic, <laughs> the Arab, heard about it. They mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you are doing? They asked. Are you rebelling against the king? See, they looked down on Jesus, you know. Jesus from Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That's how they're probably looking at us. Can anything good come out of Central? Will that church ever go to the next level? God is saying, don't be discouraged. Don't worry about what people are saying. Don't worry about how they look at you. Because it says that they mocked and ridiculed them. And it says in verse 20, I answered them by saying, The God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. What God is doing in this place is for us to experience and enjoy the blessings. The blessings is ours and we have to do the work for it. We are already here to do the work. Don't worry about what people are going to say. Because if they look down on Jesus, I know they're going to look down on me. Some people are saying, well, they ain't never move forward. That church can always stay the same. They're always going to be at this place. They already counted you out. But I thank God that he counted us in. And that God has chosen us to be here. Central, don't be discouraged. You may visit a church and see it packed to capacity. But God said, when the two or three are gathered, in his name, he will be in the midst. I'd rather go to a church that's not full to the brim and experience God than to be somewhere full and never hear his voice. I know one thing. In Central Church, I know that God is here. Yeah. I've had experiences with God. I've heard His voice. I've felt His touch. I've seen His presence. I've seen God doing great things in this church. And God is saying that He wants to encourage His people today. We are builders. And you know what I learned about builders? Sometimes we got to build buildings we'll never enter. Plant seeds for trees we'll never sit under. That's that building mentality. That's that anointing that we have inside of us. We believe in something we can't see yet. That's that faith that God has given us. Be proud of it. Use it. And understand that God is still in control. And I want you to, and Angela, I want to be alive to see that building finish. I want to be alive to see what God wants to do in this house. And if I'm not alive, God forbid, I believe that the way we started here will continue on even when we're gone. Because every brick you see in these different walls throughout Nassau, the person who laid them, they're probably dead now. But the wall is still standing. What you are doing is bigger than you. It's bigger than me. This is for the glory of God. Because what we do for Christ will last. God will preserve you. God will strengthen you. God will provide for you. God will do everything in his power to make sure the work is done. He just wants someone who's going to stand up and say, Lord, use me. I'm available to you. And trust me, it may not be easy. It may be difficult. It may be hard. There may be arguments and disagreements and the stuff that come along with life. But God is saying, never stop building. Never stop building. 
because there was a higher place he wants to take us. There is a deeper depth for us to experience. And at the end of the day, I know that if we play our role and trust God, everything will be just all right. Tell your neighbor it's time to start building. Tell your neighbor it's time to keep building. And tell your neighbor that you are anointed for the work. Our theme is rebuild. Prayer, provision, and proceed. Building up the temple of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let us, uh, let us bow our heads as we go before the throne of God. And let us reflect over our lives. And if there's anything in your life, any wall in your life that's damaged, present it before God today. There is nothing you can hide from God anyway. So let him see it all. The good, the bad, the ugly. Whatever may be holding you back, God is saying, present it to me today. Because when Christ is on this earth, he was a carpenter. And carpenters are people who are good with their hands and they put things together. And God knows just how to put your life together. He knows what you need. He can see your pain. He can see your tears. He's heard your prayers. God is saying, just have a heart that lays prostrate before him. A heart that is saying, Lord, use me. Use me as a vessel for your glory. Father God, we thank you for this day, God for bringing us in your house once again. I pray, Father God, Jesus, that you would give us the strength to continue on, Lord. I pray that we would not get weary and well-known, Lord. I pray, God, that you would strengthen our faith today. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God, I pray that you would grow us, God, and help us to build your temple like never yet before, God. Rise us up, God, to do this work. Anoint us today to do this work. Father God, we know that our lives are in your hand, God. And every area of brokenness, God, that needs to be rebuilt, we say let it be rebuilt right now in Jesus' name. Let every lacking area be filled, God. I pray right now, God, that you would lay a foundation that cannot be shaken, God. That you would build a wall in our lives, Father God, Jesus, that cannot be hit down, God. I pray right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that your will would be done in this house, God. We come against discouragement. We come against discouragement, though we may get weary at times, God. I pray, God, that you would give us the encouragement that we need, the strength that we need to carry on. Father God, we thank you, God, for choosing us for such a great task, such an honorable task, Father God, to build your temple, to be a part of the story you have written, the story that is playing out on this earth, God. I pray, Father God, that we present ourselves to you, God, as vessels, ready to be used, God. Prepare us, God, for the journey ahead, God. Dear God, we thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Father God, that we have a place to call home. We thank you, God, that we're a part of the family of God. I just pray right now, God, that your will will be done. And that this church, that our lives, that this nation, that this earth, will feel your glory, will feel your power as you build up our lives, as you build up your sanctuary, as you build up your people. In the name of Jesus we all pray. Amen. I turn the service back over now. And you have a cure. The Waha Club as she comes up to me. Let's put our hands together for Minister Donovan Pastor.
building up the temple for the Lord. So many key points that He gave us here today. I'm quite certain that you took yours, as I took mine. And the latter for me was the response of the people. Let's join our hands for this great work. And indeed, not only are we rebuilding this house, but you are rebuilding your personal home, your personal life. When you look at that particular book, remember that. Because we all have areas we need to rebuild. And it's just not this house, but it's our lives as well. So at this time, I'm going to call Pastor John McGear. At this time, he's going to give our announcements for this week.